If you're about to play Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and want to know some tips, tricks and useful information that will make the game more enjoyable before you do skydive in, then this video is for you because I'm going to break down all of the important info I wish I had known before playing the game and I also won't be giving away any main storyline spoilers here so you're in safe hands. Thanks to Ubisoft for pinging me across a review code so I could get this guide out to you swiftly and let's first cover some of the basics and that's game length because it took me approximately 25 hours to finish the main story at an average pace with an additional 20 plus hours to complete all the side activities and collectibles but I'm sure some of you will be quicker. Now it's important for you to know that there are three main regions in this game the King Law Forest, the Upper Plains and the Clouded Forest but that doesn't mean as soon as you get your Ikrin flying mount at around five or so hours into the story you can then go zooming around the whole map. In fact the game will block you if you try to leave the King Law Forest as you can see me attempt here so if you want to be able to explore the whole of Pandora, the whole game essentially without any restrictions stay on the storyline for around 10 to 15 hours until you meet each clan in each of their respective regions and learn to fly your Ikrin in that new airspace now if you don't want to power through the narrative though then that is also totally fine because each region is like its own individual open world map with the same world activities to do in each one so you can just take your time exploring the King Law Forest and then move on with the main storyline into the upper plains when you're ready to or you want a change of scenery now that said this world is huge and I found it quite challenging to navigate my way around in between quests. So one of the best tips I can give you as soon as you jump in is when you accept a quest, go into your quest log in the menus, highlight your cursor over that quest and click on show on map. You then want to drop a marker on your map here on this particular location which will then appear as a waypoint whilst you're actually in game running around in first person and using your Navi senses. Now for some reason even when using the built-in guided mode feature in this game, as well as tracking the quest in your quest log, it still doesn't show up in any sort of navigational kind of cue or directional prompt. So by doing what we've just done, it will then save you time in the long run and confusion if you want to focus on quests, objectives, and gathering materials in this game. You can also fast travel, which unlocks after completing the Song of the Ancestors quest, which is a couple hours into the story. It shouldn't take you too long. So when you're out exploring and come across abandoned RDA field camps or stations like this one on your map do fly down and quickly activate them it only takes around 20 seconds or so if you go straight for the yellow power generators that are located outside them you also pick up four spare parts in the chest at these stations always by the way which is a valuable crafting resource for later on in the game so worth doing in my opinion now the max level you can reach in this game is level 20 and at the time of recording I can't go past that level cap in fact the leveling system in this game is called combat strength which means you don't gain XP in the traditional sense it's a way to kind of indicate your character's general power that is relative to the available quests or the difficulty of enemy outposts in game now this combat strength level changes based purely on the weapons armor or mods that you equip in your infantry menu and weapon wheel so as you can see me do here I can equip a new piece of armor that will then increase my combat level, but I can also re-equip my previous armor, which will then reduce my combat level because it's not statistically as impactful as my new item. Now, this leads me onto the color-coded rarity system in this game, which you need to be aware of, which is also applied to crafting, which we'll go into in a moment, because there's three levels that you need to know. Firstly, we have green, which is the base level, and it's called fine in this game. Secondly, we have superior, which is mid-tier gear or collectibles, and it is the color purple. And finally, the best quality items are called exquisite, which are yellow or gold. Now, as expected, when you do equip this exquisite gear, your combat strength level will increase substantially. But how do you get the best gear in this game? Well, there's three options available to you to increase that base level strength of yours and to optimize your loadout. The first is by visiting each of the three clan vendors in their respective regions and purchasing gear upgrades from them by spending clan favor, which is an in-game reputational currency that I'll walk you through in just a moment. Now, you can also spend those spare parts that we spoke about earlier for purchasing additional gear from the resistant outposts to increase your level as well. But buying from vendors isn't the only way to level up. You can also pick up random gear and weapons from defeating RDA outposts throughout the map, as well as completing side quests for the Na'vi. However, However, the most impactful way to level up is by crafting your own gear and weapons because the stat bonuses that come with doing this far outstrip the random items that you loot throughout the world or buy from vendors. The problem is, 
Gathering materials to craft each item is very time consuming, which is intentional by Ubisoft, of course, offering you a little bit of a trade-off here in this game because you can complete random side quests and outposts in the hope of better gear upgrades dropping randomly, or you can spend more time gathering specific resources in the world for a unique gear upgrade that you know will definitely increase your combat strength level by at least two. But how do you learn these exquisite gear recipes for you to then be able to craft them? Well, that's where Clan Favor comes in, as I just mentioned, and this is the game's main currency that we will spend as the Na'vi have absolutely no need for coins or any sort of kind of paper money. So when you have earned enough favor with a clan which is represented by this circular swirl as you can see here you'll then be able to spend that favor and also redeem crafting recipes as you can also see here now this favor compounds over time by completing main story missions side quests and of course destroying rda outposts so for example let's say you do destroy an outpost in the king law forest you'll then earn favor as a background reward for doing so but specifically with the Haranahe clan and not the Zeswa clan who are based in the upper plains so these regional activities reward you with regional clans favor you can also find community baskets at the main bases of each clan where you can contribute which essentially means that you can sell off all of the rubbish in your infantry that you don't need and in exchange you'll then gain favor to spend on the stuff from vendors that you really do want now if you've learned something new or enjoying the video so far please do leave a very swift like down below and please consider using the Andy Reloads credit code next time you're in the Ubisoft store as I get a very small pushback thanks to your support and you also get one cent or one penny off your next purchase which is a quality deal. Now moving on we've now got our recipe which we've purchased from our clan vendor but now we actually need to craft this bow but how do we actually do it? Well we need to go out into Pandora and hunt and gather resources to do so but there's a couple of things here you should know to make this way more enjoyable. First of all, once you've learned a new recipe, you can then view it at your crafting bench at any of the home bases or RDA fast travel settlements that you've unlocked. And once you do open up this new recipe, you're gonna see three different types of resources at the different rarity levels that we spoke about earlier. So for example, to craft this exquisite bow, we need to gather an exquisite branch. So by hovering over this branch in our menu and opening up the hunter's guide by pressing L1, we can then see that we can gather a branch from this dusk leaf tree. Tree. In fact, it will even tell us where to find the rarest branches, which in other words is the game basically saying this is where you need to go to actually pick up the exquisite branches from this tree. So in that case, we actually need to head to the south of the Daughter's Pool in the Upper Plains. We'll then want to pin this plant by pressing square on our controller so it's constantly tracked by us in the world and will show up as a yellow highlighted branch or tree when we use our Na'vi sensors. But most importantly, we want to press this view biome on map button here when highlighted and this will then show us where the resource or animal is based in the world and where we'll need to go to hunt it or harvest it. So dropping a waypoint marker here is important. Now what's also important for you to know when gathering rare items like this branch is that you can pick it without needing to be there at a certain type of day or performing the gathering mini game accurately. In fact, you can pick it at an exquisite level if you fill both of those requirements. You'll just lose additional stat bonuses when you craft it at the workbench. So that is something to bear in mind then. So all right then, we've got our resources, we've crafted our bow, and now our combat level has increased, meaning we can take on more challenging RDA outposts, side quests, and not getting nuked during the story, which is actually a really good thing. But speaking of being nuked, another mechanic in this game that you need to be aware of is cooking, because health and energy management is also very important in this game, because you will automatically regenerate health over time, which is this green bar at the bottom of your screen but below that is another bar and that is your energy bar which is responsible for auto regaining your health now when that is empty it will prompt you to eat some food because if you don't your health then won't regenerate and you won't also be able to fast travel around pandora as that actually costs energy to do so now this energy meter also applies to your ikran when flying which means you can't actually boost around the skies at high speeds which sucks and actually takes a long time to fly about so we don't want that to happen so to combat this, I would recommend that if you see any sort of fruit on a
on a tree or an animal out in the world, just take 20 seconds to grab the resource so you can then cook it back at your home base so you can always keep your energy bar topped up as it's really frustrating when you actually can't replenish it and you don't have any food to eat. You Running around, it takes ages to find something, so just spend that extra 10 seconds just grabbing something off a branch. Now, there is a lot more cooking and crafting to this game, and I will have a full guide out for you shortly, so do consider subscribing if you're new here and finding this video useful so far. Now, when you do start unfogging the map and discovering different locations, it can be pretty overwhelming with all of these colored dots all over the place. So let's go through what all of these open world activities are in Pandora and what they actually give you and if they're worth your time. First of all, all these purple dots are undiscovered locations that you will then need to visit. And when you do, they will then change to blue. Secondly, the orange dots are the RDA outposts where the pollution will dissipate once you successfully take one down. And thirdly, are the bell sprigs, which are small plants that once touched will increase your overall health by a small amount, which is worth doing if you're in the vicinity of one. And fourthly, we have memory paintings, which are meditation activities and good hand-eye coordination mini games to get you closer to Pandora and they reward you with some cosmetic body paint for your character. Fifth, we have the field labs, which we discussed already, as well as random RDA patrols that have captured the wildlife of Pandora. So getting rid of them will reward you with ammo dumps and new gear items. But lastly, and perhaps most impactful of all of these side quests are the Tarasu flowers, which when discovered will give you access to ancestor skills and two skill points, as well as the Tarasu saplings, which also provide you with an additional skill point. And that's a great transition onto skills now because you can unlock all of them. But if you do decide just to focus on the story first, you're gonna pick up around 20 points or so out of a maximum of 61, just as an FYI. Now there's five skill trees in this game, and this is what they offer you. The survivor tree is centered on health and energy. The warrior tree is focused on combat buffs and improvements. The hunter tree priority prioritizes your ability to see and gather higher quality materials. The rider tree improves your Ikran's flying abilities and the maker tree increases the quality of produce from cooking and crafting. There's also Apex skills, which are unique quests that are unlocked after spending all skill points in one of these five trees and will provide you with a very advantageous ability specific to that tree. Additionally, we can get our hands on ancestor skills, which are identified as these purple markers on your map. Now, I'd recommend picking these up early doors, to be honest with you, as they provide you with a free ability and skill points. You can actually view their locations from the menus as soon as your skill tree unlocks after the song of the ancestors main story quest. Now, I'd love to break down the best ones here to choose from, but in the interest of your time, I don't want to overload you too much here in this video, so I'll have a separate skill guide video out for you shortly on the channel as well. Now, at the start of the game, you'll be able to customize your character, which is really great, but don't worry about spending too much time here to get your Na'vi looking perfect, because you can actually alter your character back at any of the three clans' main home base at an interactable table called the Changing Places table, which is a big positive here in my opinion. Now, as the story progresses, you'll also earn new cosmetic items for your character, which can then be directly applied in your character inventory screen by opening up that specific item and clicking the cosmetics tab at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. You'll then come into a menu which says cosmetics and visuals. Now, the difference here is if you have a gear pack from the Ubisoft store or a specific armor set earned in the game, it will appear here and override the visuals tab because the visuals tab is all of the items that you've collected in game, even if you've got rid of them, which allows you to then change the look of your character without overriding the current stats of your equipped armor set. So transmog, essentially. You can also change the look of your mods here in this menu. And that is a great transition onto this next video, which should be on your screen right now. It should be on my face right now, where I take you through even more tips and tricks so you can get the absolute most out of this game. So hopefully I'll see you there in just a second. But if you're still here, my huge thanks to Sylvia, Liam, Jenny, and Chris at Ubisoft, and my co-content creator, Nika, who has joined me in early access and helped me make this video. Coffee's on them, and I'll see you in that video in just a second.